Daniel chapter 6. Give honor to God, to the Son Jesus Christ, and to the Spirit of the Spirit. And this candle will be fellowship with us today, and to all of you, God's children. Daniel chapter 6, verse number 1. It pleased, pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these 120 princes, he appointed three presidents of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because he had an excellent spirit within him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find an occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. He may be seated. Amen. This morning.
worship of the king's new yeah, yeah. And you have been standing on the principles of God all of his life. Yeah. Yeah. You see that in chapter number three of Daniel, uh -huh. Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, you know that the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We see that him and his three friends are being tested because they will not bow down to that golden image. Those three boys, they get into the fire. The king says, who shall deliver you from the fire? Those three boys said, well, our God is able to deliver us from this fire. And sure enough, as they were in the fire, the king looked in the fire and he said, wait a minute. He said, did not he cast three men into the fire? They said, yeah, king, that's, that's how many it was. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king said, well, I see a fourth one in the fire. And can you imagine, they said, He said, I see a woman, and the woman looks like the Son of God. And child of God, you must know that when you get in the fire, the woman looks like the Son of God. So Daniel got past that, and now he's in chapter 6. The lemma has risen. The Bible says in verse number 3, that Daniel had an excellent spirit. Okay. Even though he was a captive, his excellent spirit allowed him to be noticed by the king. And the king appointed him over the kingdom. Now, the spirit of excellence causes, number one, passion. It causes passion for the cause of Christ. Daniel would not denounce the love and fear he had for his God. His passion began in chapter 1 as a young captive of the king. His passion continued in chapter 3 when he would not bow down to the golden image. His passion continued in chapter 5 when he was able to decipher the writing on the wall. And now in chapter 6, his passion is still exemplified by his diligent prayer. Yeah. You must have a passion for God. Yeah. Yeah. That no matter what's going on, no matter my trials, my tribulations, my circumstances, I will serve the Lord. Yeah. Not just because I have nothing else to do. Not because it's tradition that Grandma told me to come to church. Not because I have nothing to do on Sunday morning before the football game. But I come to worship God because God been good to me. And I am committed to him because he is committed to me. I am passionate for God because he first loved me. We must be committed. A spirit of excellence causes us to be committed. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people in the church who are talented but not committed. Oh, uh, choir. You have a lot of people Come on, bring sitting in the congregation <laughs> who can outsing all of us. They have to 
committed to the world, and they have committed to the church. They straddle the fence. And I come to tell you that's an uncomfortable position when you straddle the fence. You must have a passion if you're going to have a spirit of excellence. Secondly, a spirit of excellence causes you to be persecuted by your peers. That's in the Bible right here. Daniel was chosen to be president over the princes. They didn't have a problem with Daniel until he became chosen over them. And any time you get chosen over your peers, you get persecuted. The Bible declares in Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, that Daniel possessed an excellent spirit. And in verse 4 it says that the presidents and princes tried to find a reason to talk about him, but they could not. An excellent spirit will cause even your enemies to leave you alone. An excellent spirit will allow you to live a life that is pleasing to God. And when they try to start some mess, they won't be able to. We can expect great opposition when we have a spirit of excellence. Jesus told his disciples, they hated me. So they'll hate you. You must know and understand that it's lonely at the top. They were trying to follow Jesus. They said, Jesus, we're going to follow you wherever you go. Jesus tried to tell them it's lonely out here. He said the foxes have holes. The birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. It's lonely at the top. Can I testify for me? I have been elected as pastor over here for a very short amount of time. Very short amount of time. Prior to being pastor at St. Andrew, I had a lot of preacher friends. I'm going to tell my story, but I'm going to tell your story. I had friends who would call me and who would go fishing. They would call me and receive counseling and talk about this and talk about that. Remember I told you, you 
must be excellent yeah. on your level. Yeah. That's all right, Kevin. I was in harness. Yeah. I was excellent yeah. on my level. Yeah. Not that I was the best harness, but I was faithful. Yeah. It didn't have to look for murder. Yeah. It didn't have to worry about if murder was on time. Right. You must be excellent on your level.
big house, 3.5 kids, a white picket fence, and a dog. That's the American dream. We all want the money. But prosperity is not just about money. We want to have an abundance of joy, love, peace, long suffering, meekness, patience. That's possible. When you wake up to your family, the family is doing fine. That's prosperous. When you have a job to go to, that's prosperous. And some of us, we get a job, we quit the job. We get a job, we quit that job. God blesses us again with a job, and we quit that job. And they have a lot of people out here wishing they could get one job. And your African American colored self done that three jobs, and they wish that they could get one job. That's not excellence on your level. When you are appreciative for what you have, God can give you more. When you complain about what you have, when you complain about your life, you complain about your children, you complain about your job, you complain about your church, you complain about your pastor, sooner or later you'll find that all those things start to slip away from you. Because you were complaining about your wife, and this other Negro over here was talking to her. One man's junk. Another man's treasure. You don't eat the one. You're left with all these kids. Then you won't cuss her out. Tell her she ain't no good. But she was good enough when you laid with her. Don't say oh. The Bible says don't harden your hearts. But you need to work this thing out, not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of these children. I have a problem with another man raising my children. Merlin has a problem with some Negro coming in, messing with Denise. Persecution. 
early it causes you to be proud. Fourthly, it causes you to prosper. And number five, it causes you to be promoted. And just like Daniel, Daniel was promoted because he had a spirit of excellence, not mediocrity. No one wants to promote somebody who's not excellent where they are. No one wants somebody to lead them who's a mediocre leader. They are satisfied with the 10 people they got. I'm not satisfied with 10 numbers. Because the Great Commission says, go ye therefore and to all nations, baptizing them, teaching them. Now, somebody says, as long as you preach the gospel, you'll never have a mega church. I'll be to do Somebody says, as long as you teach the Bible, you will never have a mega church. I've been to different. I remember Peter. Peter was preaching one evening, talking about the goodness of Jesus, and he was talking about the Holy Ghost. When Peter got done preaching, the whole You don't have to preach money coming. You don't have to preach call it and haul it, name it and claim it. You can preach Jesus and have a mega church. If you preach Jesus, souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. Don't compromise with this gospel. You must be excellent. When you exemplify an excellent spirit, God will promote you. You don't have to go promoting yourself. Telling everybody, I'm about to sing. Oh, child, I'm the best singer they got me. They sing with all the faculty. St. John, St. John. I'm the best. I'm the best preacher. I'm the best this. You ain't nothing. Learn to humble yourself. The spirit of excellence, you have the humble spirit. You're not braggadocious. And a lot of us are braggadocious and don't even have the talent to go into bragging. Again, I'm telling y'all my story. I'm trying to look for There are some of the preachers I was telling you all about earlier. They wonder how this little boy comes all the way from all the things in the back. He's from the seven war.
what the Bible says. Yes. He who was rich yes. became poor. Yes. He humbled himself. Yes. He had a spirit of excellence. Came down to earth for work. Yes. Not to get to live. Yes. Too scared to die. Yes. He came here. He exemplified his spirit of excellence. Yes. When they talked about Jesus, he didn't curse them. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The Bible says Jesus had an excellent spirit. He humbled himself and therefore God has given him a name. Which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Yes. Not Buddha. <laughs> Buddha's bones are somewhere bleaching on a lonely hillside. Not Confucius. Confucius' philosophy has been buried in time. Not some young moon, but Jesus. Not Iyanga fixed my life. Not Dr. Phil, not Murray. But at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. Not Oprah, not your mama, not your dad. But at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Something about the name Jesus. The Bible says that thou shall bring forth the Son. And shall call his name Jesus. He shall be known as Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, a mighty God, and everlasting Father. There's something about the name Jesus. Have you ever gotten in trouble? You call mama, and mama couldn't help you. You call
Lord.